What's good? It's your boy Fanon. All right, gonna talk about Dillian White, Deontay Wilder, Dominic Brazil, and Luis Ortiz. Of course, by now, many of you know that Dillian White it has approached the WBC and requested that they make him the mandatory for Deontay Wilder instead of Dominic Brazil. And that is going to fall flat on its face. I don't care if they're if he goes straight to them directly with the WBC and appeals to them or if he files a lawsuit against them, it's going to fall on its face. And then I'm going to talk about what this all means for U.S. boxing and, and give you my thoughts on U.K. boxing. Now, before I do that, though, welcome back to the channel, subscribers. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Press the subscribe button. Press the bell icon so you can be notified of when we, re- of we when we release more videos. Love it or hate it, do it, do it, because we can have a good conversation in the comment section. I stay very active in the comment section. So more than likely, if you leave a message to me, uh, I'll chop it up with you in the comment section as long as things don't get you know ridiculously disrespectful. But I really do enjoy doing that. Also, check me out on Monday through Fridays, start time between 10.30 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. Central Standard Time for our live streams. Also, check out the Patreon. To the Patreons, just did a new upload this morning. It's part two of the four-part documentary that I said I was going to be uh, putting up. This one is really good, so check it out. All right, so Dillian White thinks that he should be the mandatory for De- Deontay Wilder, and he has filed a complaint with the WBC or a petition with the WBC. I'm not sure what the verbiage is, but pretty much said, look, I need to be the, I. it's not right for Dillian White to be the mandatory challenger. I should be the mandatory challenger. I'm rated higher than him. I deserve my shot, right? Problem with that is that that's not the rules of the WBC. The WBC's rules specifically state that just because you are the number one contender does not the number one contender does not mean that you will be the mandatory. They withhold the right to have anybody be a mandatory as long as they're in the top. I believe in the top three. Anyone in the top three can be a mandatory. And if they think that it's good for the interests of boxing, they can order a fight. They can mandate a fight with the champion with anybody like they did with Tyson Fury. Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury was mandated by the WBC. A rematch was mandated, which meant for that period of time, Tyson Fury became a mandatory challenger for the, for the, for the match, for the boxing match. And Tyson Fury chickened out and ran over there to ESPN. So they can do what basically what they want to do. Now, aside from that, I want to address the question of whether they should have him as the mandatory challenger. And my answer to that is absolutely and unequivocally, unequivocally, no, they should not. Dominic Brazil has been the mandatory, been in that spot for a while. It would be unfair to Dominic Brazil to to shift him to the side when he was already the mandatory before Dillian White became the number one challenger. Even with that, even that, excuse me, even that put aside, there was a path given to Dillian White to get a shot at Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder himself said, I will fight you as a voluntary if you fight Luis Ortiz. I will make you, I will take a fight. Deontay Wilder said, I will fight Dillian White as a voluntary you don't even need to be the man. To, you don't even have to be a mandatory, Dillian. All you have to do is fight Luis Ortiz. On top of that, the WBC mandated that Dillian White fight Luis Ortiz. And Dillian White said no. And he went ahead and fought someone else. I do believe the person that he fought was Joseph Parker. So... Why in the world would the WBC 
not only scrap a mandatory fight, but scrap that mandatory fight, that mandatory fight being Deontay Wilder and Dillian and Dominic Brazil, scrap that mandatory fight for somebody that pulled out of another mandatory fight, which was Dillian White and Luis Ortiz. Dillian White clearly wants a shot at Deontay Wilder, but he doesn't want to have to go through Luis Ortiz to get it. And there should be, I don't think there is, nor should there be, any route to the WBC title shot for Dillian White other than through Luis Ortiz. No skipping around it, no no lawsuiting around it, none of that. Fight Luis Ortiz and you would have had your shot. If he would have fought Luis Ortiz, there's a chance, if he would have fought Luis Ortiz instead of Joseph Parker, there could be a there was there's a chance that the WBC might have honored his request and said, let's have Dillian White versus Deontay Wilder. He could very well be in the position of doing that because the WBC is real flexible or wishy-washy, depending on what how you wanna the connotation you want to put on it. Either really flexible or really wishy-washy with how they go about naming their mandatory but that's in their rules and uh, that's in their rules they can do whatever they want as long as they think it's in the best interest of boxing i think that's the first section in their rule dealing with interpretation of the rules definitely read the wbc rule book before before you start getting happy thinking that these guys are breaking their own rule their their own rules there are there are loopholes that you can drive a truck through in the WBC rules. So that's my take on Dillian White. But I also want to talk about in this video, uh, or in this conversation, podcast, whatever you call it. I want to talk about the fact that all of these, if I was a UK fight fan, because I had to go back in my mind, because I was a big fan of boxing in the UK. Big fan of it. Used to love to listen to all the old, all of the fights that I could watch on HBO. I would go to Box Nation and I would get a stream from Box Nation. I would have the television, my television up on the HBO program, but I would listen to the call of the fight by Box Nation because I thought it was just so much more fair, so much less, you know, they were selling it a lot less. Really enjoyed it. Also, when I could get streams of fights in the middle of the afternoon, I really enjoyed a lot of the a lot of the fights that they were that they were having. And Anthony Joshua came up, and the rise of Match Room. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm kind of liking what's going on. But then they went super Hollywood, and now it seems as if everybody, most of the UK fighters in the heavyweight division, because they really did start taking off in the heavyweight division with Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua, to a certain extent, Dillian White. They kind of had to force feed me Dillian White, but I'm starting to watch him and enjoy him a little bit more, right? A little bit of Derek Chisora. But now it seems like they're all trying to fight in the United States. So where does that leave UK? Where does that leave UK heavyweight boxing? You even have Joe Joyce. I think Joe Joyce is going to be trying to come over here as well. So, man, if I was a UK fan, I'd be a little bit put off. I'd be put off by this a little bit. I understand that the promoters sell the idea of making a lot of money. And as I've said for a long time, there's no doubt where the money is for boxers. The money for the money for boxers is in the United States, especially if you can get on pay-per-view. And even more so now with DAZN throwing money at UK fight, fighters, the heavyweights that is, to get them to come over here and fight. ESPN did the same thing with Tyson Fury. But it's just unfortunate for the fans that they're caught in this state that and I think to a large part uh, of a catch 22 of their own making some of their own making because they put so much emphasis on how much money Anthony Joshua was making and how much more Ant money Anthony Joshua was making than the United States heavyweights and all that. Right. And how big the crowds were and really got behind a big push of casual boxing fans and, and casual boxing fans interest in boxing in the UK, Expe specifically as it relates to the heavyweights and the pay-per-views that uh, were being put on by Sky with, uh, um, God, who are they? Uh, Dillian White versus Joseph Parker, Derek Chisora, Dillian White, Anthony Joshua, all, you know, most of Anthony Joshua's last fight, Anthony Joshua to come. 
But now, as you know, in order to increase those paydays, they've now got to leave the UK and come to the United States. And I'm not even sure how many big fights there are actually going to be in the UK this year, which is not a good thing, man. Not It's not a good thing because, for in my opinion, because some of the absolute best hardcore long-term boxing fans that there are in the world are British fans. Definitely love the British commentary on uh, on Box Nation. But anyway, it is what it is, and those are my thoughts on the matter. And with that, I'm out. Peace.